Thank you so much, Chance, reporting from Juno Beach. And you heard the woman say on the East Coast there, we're a little relieved to see it go west. And that is the catch-22 with these big storm systems. People in one part of Florida say, thank God it wasn't us this time. It seems to be moving. And people in southwest Florida are saying, oh, my gosh, if only it had gone anywhere but toward us. And it is coming toward us. We want to be very clear in our coverage here. Uh, before we get to Derek, real quick, we just got the information. If you live in Lee County, uh, obviously we want to get through the storm first. But we're looking ahead. They are canceling school school through Tuesday. So if you're in Lee County right now, uh, kids are home at least through Wednesday. We hope that the schools in the areas will be ready to go for Wednesday, but first one step at a time. One step at a time, right? And l like we saw with uh, the, the radar there, you see the, the bands of rain are starting to get become more frequent mm -hmm. there. So the, the weather's going down here pretty quickly here for tonight. And really the threats tonight, like I said earlier, will be the tornado threat and the heavy rain. We're going to have some stronger winds but the really nasty winds will not be arriving until tomorrow morning throughout the really pretty much throughout the day tomorrow on Sunday. That's where we're going to see some of those Category 3 and Category 4 strength winds push close to the southwest Florida coast. So here's the latest right now on Irma. Winds still at 125, and there's some gusts there up to 155 miles an hour. Moving west-northwest at 9, pressure at 932. So the pressure has actually dropped one millibar since the last update at six o'clock. So you see the track there takes it through the keys as a category four. So intensification is expected. It's expected to get back to category four status and then make its way through the keys and then up towards the Southwest Florida coast by tomorrow afternoon. So there you go. Getting really close to the coast there, the eye uh, right around two o'clock in the afternoon. Of course, this timing will be adjusted just a little bit, but it looks like this will be a daytime landfall for Southwest Florida. And it looks like uh, pretty close to Fort Myers here by about uh, 2.30 to, I'd say about 2 to uh, 4.30, maybe 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And then we're going to see the circulation uh, pull northward into uh, Charlotte County, then up into Sarasota County, and then getting over into Tampa Bay, and then moving northward as we go through the morning hours on Monday. So by, looks like Monday afternoon, this thing's going to be in Georgia, still as a Category 1 hurricane. There are tropical storm warnings and hurricane warnings as far west as the Panhandle. Tallahassee's under hurricane warning, and we're looking at uh, tropical storm warnings as far west as southeast Alabama and parts of the Florida Panhandle as well, west of Tallahassee. So the wind gusts expected for tonight, they're going to get up into the tropical storm range. It looks like the best chance of that will be in Collier County. And then we're going to start to get the steadier winds. We're just going to start to get some gusts near hurricane force tomorrow morning in the southern portion of the area. And then the really nasty winds, though, will begin late morning, early afternoon, starting in Collier County and pushing northward as the center of circulation gets closer. Look at the wind gust there, Naples 127. Not out of the question there as this thing begins to push towards the uh, port, towards the north and closer to the coast. Fort Myers, I think the worst of it for really Collier and Charlotte County and Lee County uh, especially the areas closest to the eye, are gonna, is really going to be during the early to mid-afternoon through the late evening hours. And then we're going to start to see the storm push northward. The winds will come down some, but they're still going to be strong even at 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning. So we're not going to see pretty much a respite from all of this until Tuesday. We're going to still see strong winds even into Monday afternoon from this as the storm is pulling away. So we're not going to be out of the woods altogether weather-wise probably until late Monday night to Tuesday morning. The radar continues to show those bands of rain pushing onshore, those feeder bands we like to call them. And these are the ones that are notorious for producing those weak spin-up tornadoes. And I do want to emphasize that even though I said weak, I'm talking about that's all relative. It's weaker than the big tornadoes that you see out in the plains. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily any, any less se severe, if you will, or they'll have less impacts. They're still going to do damage, and they will still potentially cause harm if you happen to get caught under one of these. And we saw that a lot of that with Harvey. A lot of tornadoes were produced from the circulation of Harvey well after it moved well inland. So this is going to be a situation that we'll have to deal with in South Florida here for tonight. I do think, though, that the tornado threat is going to uh, gradually shift eastward tomorrow once the eye starts approaching the coast, because the east coast will have the more favorable environment as far as the wind shear for uh, uh, tornadoes. But you can see those tornado warnings there with the arrows pointing westward. We're going to have to watch those East Coast storms to see if they continue to rotate westward and produce that rotation that may prompt more tornado warnings in the Collier County and in the Hendry County. But there you see the double eyewall structure there. 
But what I mean by double eye wall is look at the very bottom of your screen. It looks like it has one eye, a little circle there, and then another one on the outer edge there. So we could be looking at a eye wall replacement cycle that is underway with this uh, concentric eye wall signature on radar. What happens is the eye that's on the, on the inside will gradually start to collapse and decay, whereas the outer eye will start to uh, become the dominant eye wall. And then we can eventually see that one potentially contra contract and the winds actually start to go up. The pressure, like I said, has been dropping since earlier uh, this afternoon. We did see the storm weaken last night, so the pressure rose into the 940s, and now we're starting to get back into the low 930s. Uh, so this storm is in an environment where it could intensify even more. The water temperature is into the upper 80s to around 90 as it approaches Key West there and the rest of the Keys. And this storm has every opportunity in the world to get back to a Category 4, and I, we do expect it to become that. That's one of the reasons why, that's one of the reasons why they were expecting such big storm surge, but really it's the sheer size of this thing and how much water it's going to be pushing towards the coast that is going to uh, be one of the deciding factors in how big that storm surge is. And you saw there, 70 miles from the center, those are the hurricane force winds, the tropical storm force winds extend outward almost 200 miles from the center. And that certainly makes sense considering we're getting tropical storm winds right now in the southern portions of Florida for Broward and Miami-Dade County, Monroe County, and also in the Collier County. So those sustained tropical storm force winds will gradually spread northward tonight through tomorrow morning. And then the hurricane force winds will start and those will actually last for a while. With the, with the storm being so wide, you're going to be looking at anywhere from, like I said, three to five to seven hours of hurricane force winds and even longer duration of tropical storm force winds. So we've got a long way to go. This is just getting started here at Southwest Florida. And when we